into some off coverage. Now, off coverage changes depending on down a distance, uh, depending on how many receivers are to your side, whether you're playing man, whether you're playing cover three, whether you're playing cover four, okay? So it differs a lot. Um, we're just going to talk about the basics, and um, I pulled some college film from my junior year, uh, and I just want to run you through what I was taught, the techniques I'm using, and the pre-snap reads that I'm making, okay? So right off the back, it is third down, okay? So third down, I'm thinking that no matter what he runs, okay, he has to get to the sticks. So at this point, me being on the outside and the ball being all the way over here on the hash, okay, I'm eliminating the idea of anything breaking out, okay? Why? That's a really, really, really long throw, and it has to be on the money. If it's not, I'm taking it to the house, okay? Coordinators are always going to try to call their best play um, the easiest completion that they can get on third down, okay? And 80% of balls are completed inside some type of way, all right? Um, I'm, a limit, I'm not worried about the slant because if he runs a slant, again, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's third and long or third and at least seven, I believe. Um, if he runs that, I just trigger downhill and I'm breaking, okay? So if this was first and 10, I'd be playing it a lot different. But again, um, this is man-to-man. -man. I'm thinking that no matter what, he cannot get inside, okay? I'm going to stay in my pedal, and I'm going to be prepared to break on outside breaking routes, okay? So as we let the play develop, notice that I'm slow out of my pedal, okay? I'm clearing the possibility of any... Um, you know, short route, again, he could technically run a slant. Technically, he could. He could run a short in. Um, and if I'm not, if I'm too far back, it, it, it'd be a man-to-man -man coverage. He can take it up and actually possibly get the first down, okay? So I'm being slow because I'm already at about eight yards, okay? So I'm being slow. So it's taking a read step. I'm just waiting to pedal. Um, a read step again, if you haven't seen the previous videos, Read stuff, you're really, really slow. Okay, if you're reading the quarterback, you're reading the drop. Um, a lot of times it's difficult to read the drop and shotgun. Uh, and if you're not reading the quarterback, you're reading the receiver's um, first three steps, okay, um, with a slow pedal. I was taught that you could also read from depth. So instead of being at seven, I'm at eight. Um, so instead of taking read steps, I'm just not moving and um, I'm reading. The speed of the release by the receiver okay so as he releases I take my first step all right and I take my first step slightly inside because we always need to protect the inside okay always protect, always protect the inside the only way that I believed at this point it would be an outside breaker route is if the quarterback were to roll out to make this throw okay they're not going to risk it all on one of the hardest throws in football so again I'm playing the inside I'm not letting him get inside. Notice that I'm still in my pedal, okay? We are, let's see, we're about 12 yards down the field, and I'm still in my pedal. A lot of DBs make mistakes by opening up too soon, okay? Breaking, he hasn't broke my cushion, so there's no reason for me to come out of my pedal, okay? A lot of DBs, they'll put their butt to this sideline, or if they were on the outside, their butt would be to this sideline, okay? Try to stay square as much as possible. Even though my shoulders aren't completely square to the line of scrimmage, all right, they're still square to the receiver, okay? They're still square to the receiver. At this point, what I was taught is the last phase, all right? So for DBs that get antsy um, or for DBs who just don't have as smooth of a pedal as others, okay, and have a tendency to open up, Instead of opening up, you can angle your shoulders to the receiver, okay? That way, if he does break, let's say, for instance, he does break this way, okay? I can put this foot in the ground and trigger downhill. If he does break inside, all right, if I were to be open, I would have to either flip my head in a speed turn, okay? Or I would have to work really, really hard just to get back inside, all right, but because I'm still square to the receiver, all I would have to do is put this foot in the ground, all right, pivot this way. And at this point as well, because I'm not fully open, 
I still am able to run deep if he throws that ball, okay? So as we let the play play out, he breaks, all right? I give in at the absolute last second, okay? So we are 5, 10, about 15 yards, and I'm just starting to slightly open, okay? If I were to open sooner, I won't be able to make this break. But because I hold my pedal for the absolute longest I possibly can, okay, by the time he breaks it, I'm about to open up. I'm not in a full-blown crossover, all right? I'm in the very, very beginning stages of my crossover, so I'm not gaining as much depth, all right? So as I cross, begin the crossover, he breaks, and I can quickly transition out of that and maintain my inside leverage, okay? So watch it play out. And I was able to get my hands on the ball, okay? So again, the first step. All right, if we're just counting, if we're just counting my um, pre-snap reads, third down, third down meaning he has to get to the sticks. The sticks somewhere back here, all right? Third down, I'm on the outside. I'm thinking inside breaking routes because 80% of balls are completed inside. The only way I believe that he's going to run an outside breaking route, all right, is if the quarterback half rolls or rolls out and throws this ball, all right? So other than that, other than the half roll, I'm thinking protect inside. I'm not jumping anything short, all right? You still have to play the short routes. You don't want to be so far off that he catches the ball and gets the first down, but I'm not jumping anything short, all right? I'm not jumping this, all right? I'm not jumping this. I'm not jumping anything short. I just want to make the tackle with this field position, all right? They're not going to go for it on fourth down, so I don't have to worry about that. I just have to make the tackle if he breaks before the sticks. All right, so again, all right, he breaks. Here's the first down right here. All right, good receivers will break two to three yards past the sticks and then come back to the ball, okay? So me anticipating that he has to get to the sticks, I'll hold my pedal as long as I can, hold it, hold it, hold it, barely gets me to open up, and I'm able to come back downhill. Let's take a look at another rep. Now, I'm not entirely sure where the first down marker is, but again, um, let's just read what we have, okay? So right off the back, we're in man again. Um, the third receiver is really, really tight. Um, we have a lot of good spacing here, all right? So what I'm thinking, as always, when I'm playing off coverage, the ball's on the opposite hash, protect the inside, okay? There's only so many routes that he can run from outside, a deep out. Okay, that's really all I can run deep out, deep comeback, which is very unlikely considering where the ball is. Now, if the ball was here, those routes are more likely. But throwing all the way from the opposite hash, a deep out without a rollout right, is very risky, very unlikely. So again, corners, um, if you're in this situation, whether you're playing man like me or you're playing cover three, a lot of times it ends up being the same deal. All right. So if we're in cover three, if he were to go in and he were to go in, although you have deep third, this would pretty much be your man. All right. So if they were to run three slants, you have it because it's the deepest player in your third. If you run a run a dig, you have it deepest player in your third. All right. So you have to get in the habit of realizing um, when a zone coverage is actually man coverage. OK, so let's let it play out as he pedals. I do what I did again in the first play, all right? I was very comfortable this game. I let him take a step before I got on my pedal. That's my read step. I see that he's getting off the ball. I'm getting in a fast pedal, all right? I'm getting in a fast pedal. So he is um, behind the line of scrimmage. Because he's a step behind, all right, he's off the ball. Technically, I'm eight yards. So again, I'm not taking a read step. My depth is my read steps, all right? So I'm going to let him get off the ball. His first step's gonna tell me whether he's going deep or whether he's gonna count steps to break, okay? Takes a long stride, all right? Takes a long stride, because again, if he's going deep, he has to get off the ball extra fast just to get even with the line of scrimmage. So his first step has to be hard. All right, so I noticed that. I noticed that he's going deep. 
Deep meaning, all right, he's not running anything shorter than this, okay? I don't want to say, okay, he's off. He's getting off the ball really fast. I need an open turn because he's going to run a fade. He's going to run a post. No. He's just clearing the uh, the possibility of short routes with his first step, okay? His first step told me deep, so I need to get into my pedal fast. All right, pedal, 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 pedal. Stay square, stay square, stay square. I'm still square. So we are 5, 10, 11, almost 12 yards down the field, okay? And I'm still in my back pedal. Be patient in your back pedal. Be patient in your back pedal, okay? Instead of opening and crossing over, get into my crossover, all right? They're taught to get us to turn. So instead of turning fully, I turn towards the receiver, all right? Again, I call this the end phase. I'm turning towards the receiver so that, again, if I need to run, I can go, but I'm not fully opening the gate. If I need to break downhill, I can from the position because my shoulders are already facing that way. If I need to go this way, I pivot, I put my left foot in the stick, my left foot in the ground, and then I open, and we just go this way, okay? So stay square, stay square as much as you can in your pedal, especially from the outside, all right? Staying square, staying square, staying square, staying square, okay? And at the very last, when he's starting to break, I'm barely starting to open. If I were to open even a yard earlier, he may have this, but because I opened at the last second, and again, it's not a full open, all right? I'm just getting halfway between a pedal and a crossover. That way I get the benefits of both, all right? The pedal allows for a better break. Crossover allows for you to run deep, all right? The end phase allows you to be halfway in between. And I'm still not giving up that dig. So again, the key to playing off coverage, all right? There's a lot of different ways you can play it, but the very first key, all right, is being square as much as you can whether that's square to the line of scrimmage or slightly turning towards the receiver and staying square to the receiver. Whatever it is, we are not opening the gate. Receivers are taught to get us to open so they can back door, open so they can go the other way, open so they can break. So the longer we stay square, the more plays we're going to be able to make.